Scallywags. One morning, Henry was waiting at Thomas's junction for the tank and his connecting train, which was very late. What's the point of giving Thomas a branch line when he can't even keep to time? Whistled Henry indignantly. The passengers grew just as impatient as the big green engine, and the station master was just about to call for a bus when Thomas came huffing and puffing around the bend. I'm so sorry, Henry. Bertie had a flat tire, and his passengers had to walk to the station. I, I tried to make up for lost time, but, dri but driver wouldn't let me. Pa! hissed Henry. You're just as slow as that Peter Sam on the little railway. Before Thomas could respond, Henry pulled away with his passenger train, leaving the tank engine with the youth. Silly big engine, snapped Thomas to Annie and Clarabel, who quite agreed with him. Henry arrived at Crowley's gate very behind schedule. Duke was waiting with his train and he looked just as disgruntled as the big green engine. What time do you call this? What kept you? huffed Duke. Ah yes, the young engines of today have no idea how important it is to keep our passengers happy. It's up to experienced engines like us to whip them into shape. Unhappy passengers means no passenger trains, added Henry in agreement. And no passenger trains would never suit his grace, finished Duke, letting off steam knowingly. I was going to say disgusting, muttered Henry under his breath. Just then the guards whistle blew and Henry began to puff away. Take care, Henry, said Duke. Remember what I said about teaching young Thomas. Henry pondered on what the old engine had said and decided to put it into action. From then on, whenever Henry met Thomas at the junction or, or in the yards, he could berate him about keeping to time and how important passengers were. Thomas tried to argue with Henry, but Henry never gave him a chance. Eventually, the tank engine became so frustrated with Henry, he would blow steam at him whenever they met. Anyone would think he's the fat controller with all the orders he's given me, complained Thomas to Terence at the signal. I'm no good with conflict, commented the tractor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got my fuel to plow. And he tactfully chugged away. A few days later, Peter Sam was at the works getting his new tyres fitted. He basked in the sun, enjoying the rest from the usual trains. He was just about to doze off when Thomas was shunting into the works, grimace on his face. Hello, Thomas! Oh, oh goodness me. What's happened to your whistle? It looks all wonky. I was passing under the bridge on my branch line when a brick fell on my whistle. Then I had Henry berating me about being late again, even with my broken whistle. I he's just an old fusspot. Fuddy Duddy, answered Peter Sam, grinning. Answered Peter Sam, grinning. How did you know? Questioned the number one engine. The little engine chuckled knowingly. <laughs> Grandpa used to be like that all the time. He still is some days. How do you deal with it? Pleaded Thomas. You simply remind them of their age and how us younger and stronger engines will take care of them when they break down. Of course, Peter Sam was only teasing, but Thomas now had some very cheeky ideas. That evening, Henry was waiting at Ellsbridge for a stone train for his mixed goods. Normally, Percy would deliver the truck and shunt them behind Henry. However, Percy had been called away to the harbour, so the only available engine was Thomas. Nice to see you still in one piece, old timer, peeped Thomas as he arrived at the stone. What did you say? snapped Henry, wheezing loudly. Oh dear, are you out of hearing? They say that's the first thing to go in the old age. Thomas chuckled as he ran round the trucks and reversed it onto the back of Henry's train. Listen here, you. I won't tolerate this behavior, especially when your Thomas began blowing his new whistle cheekily, cutting Henry off. Ah, oh, there you go again, you poor old thing, rambling and raving about younger engines. Don't you forget when you inevitably break down that us youngsters will have to pick up the pieces. Then there was trouble.
cinders and ashes, wheezed Thomas. Henry let off steam weakly in agreement. Peter Sam was just finishing having his tires fitted when Duke rolled up next to him. Good evening, Grandpa. Broken down again, teased the little Endon. Quite the opposite, youngster, interrupted Duke. I've been ordered to be repainted. I must look my best in case his grace decides to visit our railway. Peter Sam yawned and was just about to be cheeky when Henry and Thomas were both shunted into the works. What, what are you two doing, doing here? asked the little engine in unison. Thomas and Henry looked ashamed and explained what had happened with the trucks. If you had just listened to me, we could have avoided all of this, huffed Henry. Uh, I would have listened to you if you didn't bark orders at me all the time, argued Thomas. S Scallywag, hissed the big green engine. Fusspot, snapped the tank engine. Duke and Peter Sam burst out laughing. What's so funny, scowled Thomas, raising an eyebrow at them. You sound just like us back in our old line, giggled Peter Sam. It seems you've been taking advice from our smaller engines, smiled Duke. Henry, I only ever meant for you to help steer little Thomas in the right direction and be somewhat of a mentor to him. Henry blushed. He did feel rather silly now. As for you, Thomas, added Peter Sam, you must be careful and precise with your teasing. It's no fun if you're just being rude to Henry, and you'll end up looking like a rather nasty engine, like that DV Steezo. Both big engines looked at each other and smiled warmly. I am sorry I treated you so poorly, Thomas, said Henry softly. I was only ever trying to help you. No, I'm sorry I teased you, Henry, replied Thomas. It was silly of me to act so immature. Peter, Sam, and Duke looked at each other. Yeah, come along, youngster, said Duke. I can have my repaint in our shed. Just give these two their space. After all, chuckled Peter, Sam, it would never suit his grace. And, and the two little engines puffed away.